we're moving on to talking about Wendy Williams, y'all. I don't like anything that's going on here, and I'm very angry about it. Hey there, I'm attorney and legal analyst Emily D. Baker. These are the quick bits. Warning, first words ahead. Let's get into it. This is a lot. Grab your popcorn, a snack, a stiff drink, gird your loins. We're, we're buckle up, buckle up for the fuckery. Just, just buckle up. Let's talk about Wells Fargo freezing all of Wendy Williams's accounts and trying to put her in a guardianship. You may know guardianship by another name, the name it's, that's used in California, which is conservatorship. It is the same with a few caveats. Now in New York, I am not a licensed attorney in New York, but one of the things that attorneys are very good at is research. So based on the research, that I have done, what I found easily and terrifyingly is that, um, well, anyone can be a petitioner in a guardianship in New York. So a guardian, to get a guardianship in New York, a petitioner has to file a petition asking the court to appoint a guardian. But anyone can be a petitioner. And once the petition's filed with the court, the court then can appoint a court evaluator to evaluate the case. The court evaluator will do an initial investigation, provide the court with a report, and then either, well, generally report an opinion. And then the court will decide whether they are going to need to appoint a guardian or not, whether they need to appoint uh, legal representation or not. And then it will move forward to potentially being a guardianship or not. In New York, like other states, you can have different types of guardianships. That can include just a financial guardianship, like Britney Spears had a guardianship of the estate and the person, but there can be a guardian for financial reasons to uh, pay bills, to stop financial abuse, to um, take care of planning. But, but, it can also extend to medical care and things like that. I imagine based on what we've seen that what Wells Fargo is seeking is a financial guardianship. But the backstory here is also very strange because you have a financial institution freezing someone's assets and their access to their assets. And then that individual is now having to go to court to say, these are my assets and I should be able to have access to them. And in response to that, Wells Fargo is like, no, no, but we've applied for a guardianship. We suspect there is um, financial issues. And I think that that is very, very strange. So we're going to pull up all of the timeline documents. We're going to go through um, what's happened in court because this started February 4th with a filing um, by Wendy Williams against Wells Fargo. It is just, it is just wild. Petitioner Wendy Hunter, which is Wendy Williams, um, by and through her attorneys, Miami Entertainment Law Group, by way of petitioner, the attorney that's undersigned, against respondents Wells Fargo, we're just calling them Wells Fargo, brings this special proceeding to ask for the following that respondent be stopped or enjoined from freezing all of petitioner's accounts, including but not limited to personal business deferred compensation and investment accounts and interfering with her right to access her financial assets and statements pending a final binding decision by an arbitrator and alleges as follows. So this is an emergency petition for a preliminary injunction and temporary restraining order. So you can get the temporary restraining order and then move to the preliminary injunction hearing. There's different standards there. Petitioner Wendy Hunter is an individual residing in New York. Uh, Wells Fargo is a company that is operating in New York. Jurisdiction and venue, they're all in New York. We're not even going to go over it. Facts common to all causes of action are highly relevant to us. On or about April 11th, 2018, Wendy Williams and Wells Fargo entered into an asset advisor agreement and client agreement, collectively the agreements. So she had a asset advisor that worked for Wells Fargo and became a client of that particular service by Wells Fargo. Upon information and belief, the purpose of the agreements is for Wells Fargo to provide brokerage cash services and to execute securities trades with her accounts. 
upon information and belief. I'm not going to say that every time, but then I might, but I'm going to try not to. Um, Wells Fargo is in possession of several million dollars worth of funds belonging to Williams, which are currently managed by Wells Fargo or held in Wells Fargo's possession. For more than two weeks, respondent has denied Williams any access, whether online or otherwise, to her financial accounts. And when we say otherwise, we're going to get to how much um, Wendy Williams has had to go to lengths to fight with Wells Fargo over access to her accounts, including in person. And they have still not given her access to her accounts. For more than two weeks, respondent has denied petitioner access online or otherwise to her financial accounts, assets, and statements. And statements. She can't access her statements. Can you imagine not being able to access your banking statements? I mean, if you're worried about financial fraud or undue influence or whatever they're going to say later, to not let somebody see their statements is so bananas to me. Based on advisement by Williams' former, former financial advisor, Lori Schiller. This is Lori Schiller's assessment and advisement to Wells Fargo that Williams was of unsound mind. Despite Williams's termination of Schiller as her financial advisor due to Schiller's, they're alleging, malfeasance in relation to petitioner's accounts and Schiller's improper conduct in relation to their professional relationship, respondent continues, Wells Fargo, continues to rely on Schiller's advisement as support for its decision to deny Williams access to her financial assets and statements. As additional support for its decision to keep petitioner's accounts frozen, respondent references its authority under the agreements that we talked about above, the uh, client agreement, to, quote, pause or reject instructions for a proposed transaction pending judicial or administrative remedies should they suspect financial exploitation, dementia, or undue influence. However, that provision is inapplicable in this instance for several reasons, including the fact that petitioner has not proposed a transaction for which respondent allegedly has the discretion to pause or reject. So this would be like saying, hey, sell all of my, sell my entire stock portfolio and put it into Dogecoin. They, Wells Fargo could say, mm, I have questions about why you want to sell off your entire stock portfolio and put it into Dogecoin. That would be a instruction. I have questions. I, Wells Fargo, have questions about that instruction. So this agreement gives me the right to pause that instruction or reject that instruction because it seems sus. And we can go to court or go to arbitration and talk about it. But freezing of the entire account all of the accounts and access to statements for me does not fall under instructions for a proposed transaction. Proposed transaction is the operative word. There's no proposed transaction here. It's all access to all of her accounts. So where's the proposed transaction? I don't see a proposed transaction and freezing somebody's fucking accounts, but okay, we'll continue. As even if the provision did apply, respondent is going beyond the scope of the authority granted by the provision because respondent is completely denying Williams the ability to access or even view, it's the or even view for me, or even view whether online or otherwise, her financial assets and statements, which... Williams has requested for the purpose of ascertaining the current standing of her accounts and which is not a transaction as contemplated under the agreements. It seems that they have requested her statements, not just online, like, okay, fine, then send them to me, to ascertain the current standing of her accounts and she has not been allowed to do so. So why is Wells Fargo so worried about Wendy Williams seeing her financial accounts and what went down when Williams terminated this financial advisor. Was it a termination and a I'm withdrawing all of my money out of your bank immediately and going to bank with somebody else? What is it? What is it? What is it? If Wells 
Fargo is going to try to say, we are truly and deeply concerned about this individual and the decisions that they are making. Freezing things is one thing, but not letting someone see their account statements is on another level. In other words, they say Wells Fargo's actions and the actions of its agents have impeded and unlawfully prevented Williams access to her property. Yeah, money. Although pre-dispute arbitration is required under the agreements, and I appreciate the lawyers putting this in because the lawyers are saying, we acknowledge that we are required to arbitrate, which means they have to go to like mediation. They have to go to an arbiter. If there's any dispute under that client agreement, they have to go to arbitration. And the lawyers are saying, we know that there's an arbitration provision. However, given the imminent and irreparable harm caused by petitioner and respondent's actions, petitioner is seeking injunctive relief. So we're not suing. What we are asking for is a temporary restraining order and a preliminary injunction. Request for relief. They're asking to unfreeze the accounts. We're going to get to the end of the request for relief. They go through the evaluation of petitioners likely to succeed on the merits because they are her funds. And they are saying there is no right for Wells Fargo to freeze them under the plain meaning of the agreement. And then they ask for the court to order in joining and restraining Wells Fargo and any of their agents at all from freezing all of Williams's accounts, including but not limited to personal business, deferred compensation, investment accounts, and from interfering with her right to access her financial assets statements pending a final binding decision by an arbiter. So, hey, we will go to arbitration, but you have to unfreeze her shit first. In joining respondent and any of their agents, members, officers, employees, and anyone acting on uh, Wells Fargo's behalf from freezing, withholding, or otherwise altering any and all assets that are currently identifiable as accounts and policies which contain funds that were removed and or withheld from Williams's own personal or business accounts and all other funds. And it is more of the same. Unfreeze the accounts, reopen any frozen accounts, stop interfering with her accounts, and then granting other such other relief as necessary. That was on February 4th. The next filing was a form order to show cause. The order to show cause that was filed is not filled out. This was just filed as a, hey, your honor, here's our proposed order. And this was actually filled out by the court, but we're not there yet. Let us go to Wendy Williams's attorney's affidavit next that was filed on February 9th. This is Wendy Williams's attorney's affidavit. Uh, Celeste N. McCaw. Celeste is an attorney licensed in New York, uh, is attorney for Williams, is fully familiar with the facts, submits this affirmation together with the affirmation of Williams dated February 3rd. I wonder why it took that long to get filed. I'm submitting this affirmation together with the affirmation of Williams in support of the emergency petition for preliminary injunction, temporary restraining order, and other relief in aid of pending arbitration dated February 4th by order to show cause for a preliminary injunction. I'm not saying all of that again. February 4th, Hunter commenced this special proceeding by filing the emergency petition, which is attached below, asserting, among others, that Hunter is likely to succeed on the merits regarding the cause of action against Wells Fargo for declaratory relief and breaches of fiduciary duty based on Wells Fargo's refusal to allow Hunter to access her financial assets and property. This is what they are saying they will sue for, but the contract that they have with Wells Fargo, that advisory agreement requires they go to mediation or arbitration first, and they can't sue Wells Fargo properly until they do that first. So what they're saying is that these are the causes of action that they will likely sue on once they are able to finish that arbitration proceeding and then go forward from there. But they can't sue yet. But they're asking for this TRO, which would normally be in connection with a lawsuit. They're saying this TRO can't be in connection with a lawsuit yet because we can't file a lawsuit yet because this contract forces us to abide by this provision. So they are trying to abide by the contract while still seeking relief, which I think is appropriate. As explained more fully in the emergency petition that we just went over, Williams is entitled to a preliminary injunction and TRO and joining a restraining Wells Fargo and all of their peeps. Um, and anyone else that acts on their behalf from freezing her accounts, but not limited to personal business, deferred compensation, investment accounts, and interfering with her right to access financial assets and statements because petitioner can show one probability of success on the merits 
which is one of the elements, and two, the danger of irreparable injury in the absence of injunctive relief, which if you were locked out of all of your access to money, you can imagine what kind of damage that could cause to not just you, but you, your living situation, your long-term financial well-being, your credit score, all of it, like the contracts that you might breach, bills that will bounce and get unpaid, um, and then fines and fees and penalties that can incur after that. So that is what they're talking about with irreparable injury because you can't undo some of that. And the balance of the equities is in her favor. Hunter can show a probability of success. Hunter already suffered and is in danger of continuing to suffer imminent and irreparable harm in that Wells Fargo's refusal to unfreeze the accounts and financial assets poses a serious financial hardship to the health and safety of Williams, her family, and her business. This petition is being made as request for emergency relief because until Wells Fargo reopens the accounts and allows her access to her financial assets, she, her family, and her business are at risk of imminent and irreparable financial harm while continuing to endure ongoing financial obligations. No prior application has been made. Um, wherefore, all the legal stuff signed by the lawyer lady and then going on to attach the emergency petition that we just went over. So that was February 9th. Now we get to the affirmation by Williams. But since there is a new one that is signed as an affidavit, I'm just going to go over the new one because the new one is signed as an affidavit. It's going to be a little out of order because Wells Fargo complained about this um, in their filing. So you'll hear their complaint about it and know that that has now been rectified with this new one. So I'm just going to pull the new one. To my knowledge, all of the facts stated in this affirmation are true and correct. Oh, so they leave the word affirmation in the rest of the place. They didn't have her. They had her sign a new one that was notarized, but they only changed affidavit up here. Fair enough. Over 18 years of age. I am petitioner in the above entitled matter commenced by the filing of the emergency petition for preliminary injunction and TRO and other relief. I submit this affirmation in support of the petition against Wells Fargo. The request for relief arises from, among other things, Wells Fargo's failure and refusal to reopen my personal business and deferred compensation and investment accounts. From here on out, I'm just going to go accounts and we all know what we mean and unfreeze my financial assets which has caused and is causing imminent and irreparable financial harm to myself, my family, and my business. For more than two weeks, Wells Fargo has repeatedly denied my request to access my financial assets, which total over several million dollars. I have submitted multiple written requests to Wells Fargo, and I have visited various Wells Fargo branches in the South Florida area in an effort to resolve this matter outside of the courtroom. Can you imagine how angry. I mean, I can't imagine how angry I, the level of angry I would be. If you're not going to unfreeze it and I have to go to court, what, at least let me see that you haven't moved my fucking money. I would, the stress that I would have to date, I have submitted and made over a dozen requests regarding the financial damages resulting from Wells Fargo's decision to unlawfully deny me access to my accounts. As a result of my inability to access my financial assets, I have defaulted and I am at risk of defaulting on several billing and financial obligations, including but not limited to mortgage payments and employee payroll. In response to my request, Wells Fargo, and here's where we learn what Wells Fargo is doing. In response to my request, Wells Fargo has informed me, who oh, have they now, that their determination to deny me access to my accounts is based on the advisement of my former financial advisor, Lori Schiller, former, who alleged that I was of unsound mind. She's a financial advisor. What does she know? Despite my decision to terminate Schiller as a result of her improper conduct in relation to my accounts, and again, those are allegations. This is this is Wendy Williams's perspective. Despite my decision to terminate Schiller as a result of her improper conduct in relation to my accounts, Wells Fargo continues to deny me access to my financial assets and statements. If Schiller was concerned, if there was something giving benefit of the doubt, if there was something that was causing substantial concern, why block the statements? This then goes on to say, as I am in the process of auditing my current vendor and service contracts to ensure that all personal and business relationships are in line with my current needs, which everyone has the right to do, it is essential that I have access to all of my financial property. It appears that Schiller was and is disgruntled by the decision for a potential change in direction. I don't know if that means um, leaving Wells Fargo or just moving to another financial advisor. I don't know. 
And it saddens me that respondent and I have not been able to resolve this controversy amicably. <sighs> to have to go to court over this seems so wild. Given the imminent and irreparable financial damage directly resulting from Wells Fargo's actions, I demand that Wells Fargo reopen my personal business and deferred compensation accounts, unfreeze my assets, and allow me access to my bank statements, or else I will have no choice but to seek the court's intervention, which is where we are now. Despite overtures that their in-house legal team would be giving a quote-unquote ruling after I provided them with a properly executed, witnessed, and notarized power of attorney and signed letter of representation as requested, Wells Fargo has yet to advise me of their legal team's decision and has instead engaged outside counsel. I'm assuming, based on this, that that was provided because when it says as requested, I'm assuming that they were provided because it says after I provided them with all of this, they would give me a ruling, but they haven't given me a ruling. So I'm assuming that those things have been done and that she does now have a power of attorney who could deal with this. Nonetheless, despite the urgency of curing the irreparable financial damage in a good faith effort to resolve this matter without the court's intervention, I advise my attorneys to wait until February 3rd before filing the emergency petition. However, Wells Fargo has still failed to reopen my accounts or unfreeze my assets or allow me access to my financial statements. Such failures cause me and is continuing to cause irreparable financial damages and financial hardship to me, my family, and my business. Until Wells Fargo reopens the accounts and unfreezes the assets, my family and I are at risk of suffering continue irreparable financial harm while enduring ongoing financial obligations. Accordingly, it is respectfully requested that the court issue an order for preliminary injunction and TRO in joining or restraining Wells Fargo and anyone that works with them from further freezing her shit. So this is then notarized. This was notarized today because Wells Fargo responded, and we'll get to their response, and said, well, the information was not notarized, so it is insufficient, and the court cannot consider it. Um, and then there's a letter filed today from Williams's attorneys addressing Take that. care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Have a great weekend. Don't forget to do the likey, subscribe to YouTube things. I always forget to ask, and I will see you soon. Bye. Thank you for joining me for today's Quick Bits. For a full breakdown of this story and more, join me on my long-form channel at The Emily D. Baker or on my podcast, The Emily Show, on all your favorite podcasting apps. And for more Quick Bits, you can find me on social media at The Emily D. Baker. I will see you for another Quick Bit soon.